what are the stages of menopause? Yes, there is more than one stage. I'm Kat the Hormone Fairy and I'm going to talk you through the stages and what to expect as you go through this period of transformation in your 40s and 50s. Just note that every woman will go through this transition or this transformation in their own way. So you may experience different symptoms to those of your colleagues and friends. So let's look at the stages. First, you have pre-menopause, second, perimenopause, third, menopause, fourth, post-menopause. Let's look into those in a little bit more detail. So pre-menopause tends to be women in their 30s or early 40s. It's when you are having no symptoms whatsoever, your periods are a regular 28 or a 30 day cycle, and you're most likely ovulating and fertile each month. Your estrogen and progesterone levels are rising and falling in line with a normal menstrual cycle. Second stage is perimenopause. This tends to happen, doctors would say, at age 45, although in my clinic I see women experiencing perimenopause as early as late 30s. The doctor would recognise perimenopause as the first symptom being irregular periods. So that cycle going from a 28-day cycle through to maybe a shorter cycle, 24 days, or getting longer, maybe you're starting to skip periods, or that cycle is maybe going 30 days plus. Period changes may happen too. Maybe your actual menstrual bleed is becoming shorter or longer. Some women experience bleeds for up to two weeks. Now, it tends to happen, as I say, at age 45, but that can change. And please be aware that some women will go into perimenopause or menopause much younger, even as young as 20 or 30. It's really important to understand the symptoms. As a doctor would say, there are 34 symptoms. I would say there are many more than that. So please start tracking your symptoms. Watch my earlier video that goes through the 34 plus symptoms that are linked with menopause. Now, typically the perimenopause stage can last five years, but for some women, it can last anything from two years right up to 12 years. And you won't experience all the symptoms in one go. It tends to be when the hormones, the estrogen and your progesterone are starting to fluctuate. And you may find that at different months or different years, you will experience different symptoms. The biggest tip is to make sure that you are tracking your periods every single month and that you are tracking your symptoms. That way, when you go to your GP, your doctor or your health professional or health coach, they can look at your symptoms. And that is one of the easiest ways to find out if you are in this perimenopause transition. Next, the third stage is menopause. This is the thing that most women don't understand. Menopause is just one day. It's the last ever day of your last ever period. Once you have gone 12 whole months without any period bleeds, no menstrual cycle, you are classed as postmenopause, the final stage. This is where it's so important to track your period so that you know that you have actually experienced menopause, that last ever day of your last period. The good thing about menopause is you can throw away the tampons, the towels, there'll be no more menstrual bleeds or worrying about your bleed starting at an inconvenient time. For most women, on the average, this happens at age 51 in the UK. However, as I've said previously, I'm seeing more women experience menopause at a younger age, late 30s, early 40s, or again, many women like being 34, sorry, 54 or um, 55 and still having regular periods. So every single woman is going to go through this differently. One of the things that you can ask your doctor or your GP to do, or someone like myself who's a health professional, is to get a blood test. The blood test is looking for elevated levels of your follicular stimulating hormones. It also looks at your luteinizing hormone. In perimenopause, the blood test is not going to show enough information, so doctors tend to go on symptoms. But as you get closer to menopause and the period stopping, or once you've experienced menopause and no more bleeds, you will have elevated levels of follicular stimulating hormone. This is how the doctor will confirm that you are post-menopause. 
Another way to do it is by having the Dutch test. Have a look at my other video and you can find out more about the Dutch test. This is a urine test that can be used in perimenopause or postmenopause and is really useful to understand what's going on with your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, your cortisol, as well as some of the markers like your B6, your B12, your and your melatonin levels. Symptoms normally stop once you become a menopausal or postmenopause. So no more periods, no more risk of getting pregnant either. You may still experience symptoms such as weight gain. Some women experience hot flashes and night sweats and vagina dryness tends to be a symptom that many women experience. This is due to the lack of estrogen in your body. But there is so much you can do, whether you choose the hormone replacement route or for other women, the natural approach, which is what I specialize in. The final stage, postmenopause. You have gone 12 whole months with no periods. Postmenopause does come with a few added risks due to the lack of estrogen in your system. As a woman, you are more prone to cardiovascular disease and um, heart attacks. So it's really important to start thinking about your heart health. The other risk is osteoporosis. Some of the things that you can do now that you've thrown out those tampons and the towels is to start putting some supplements into your bathroom cupboard. So you've got calcium and vitamin D are really important for your bone health to help prevent osteoporosis. Walking is fabulous for your bones too and also um, strength bearing exercise. For your heart, you want to be making sure that you're exercising. Do some form of cardiovascular exercise eat well, think about your cholesterol, think about your stress levels, and you can also add in some magnesium supplements too. There are many other supplements that can be beneficial for your heart, but reducing your stress, thinking about your diet is key at this stage. Some women experience palpitations in the perimenopause years. Please go back and watch the video that goes through the symptoms. If for any reason you start to experience heart symptoms or high blood pressure, please make sure you go to your doctor immediately and get your heart checked out. Another thing that can happen post menopause is vagina dryness. You may not need to start thinking about some form of lubrication, especially when you're having sex. There are plenty of natural lubricants on the market. So just drop me a message if you want to know more about that. You can still have a healthy and fun sex life in perimenopause and postmenopause. You do not have to suffer. The biggest thing to remember in menopause is that it is a transition that every woman will experience in their own unique way and you don't have to suffer. Please don't suffer girls. There is plenty of help out there. Track your symptoms, track your periods, talk about this, educate yourself and get help when you need to. Now, just to be aware that some women, if you are experiencing breast cancer or ovarian cancer or a hysterectomy, then you will be thrown straight into menopause. Often those women don't um, have the buildup of the perimenopause and just thrown straight in with the hot flashes, the night sweats, the mood swings and the weight gain. Again, you don't have to suffer. The more that you can educate yourself, the easier this is going to be. You can watch my other video. I'll pop the link below on speaking to Lucy, a breast cancer thriver on her menopause experience. Please, if you found this valuable, like, share and subscribe and I'll be sharing more tips. You can also visit my website, The Hormone Fairy and download your free guide on the seven mistakes that you are making in perimenopause.